The Legend of Blue Eyes. This is the first set in the game, and as such is the only one which I will be talking about in a vacuum. There are only five effect monsters in the game at this point, with the set being almost exactly 50% normal monsters. On the other hand, there are also some of the strongest cards in the game printed in the introductory set. So, let's see how LOB holds up after 20 years. So first I want to go over the tiers. So we have design mistakes as the most powerful cards, and this encompasses cards which are on the ban list and can't come off of the ban list because they're too strong. It also includes cards which have come off the ban list because of an effect changing errata, and this also includes cards that are ruling nightmares, mainly pole position and some other cards that are just really not healthy for the game. It's not necessarily based on their level of competitive success, it's more so this is limiting the game and not creating a good environment for play more than anything. So that's design mistake. Next tier, worth considering today. These are cards that have maybe fringe meta relevance all the way up to, you know, competitively viable cards. There's actually some in every set, and I'm excited about that. Next below that is meta at one point, and this is for a historical perspective. Cards are going to rise to wherever their highest watermark is. And meta at one point is one of those levels. Even if it is in someone's side deck, it still counts as meta at one point. So a single copy in someone's side deck who places like 8th in an official tournament might be enough to get something into meta at one point. Below that we have good on release. And these are cards that I think were good for their time period. Not necessarily competitively viable at this point, but I think a lot of cards got overshadowed, and partially it's because of the way the formats work, where not every set gets a good amount of time to shine. Formats are solved really quickly, but I think that they actually have a lot of room for innovation and experimentation. Next is filler outclassed. These are cards which there's usually a strictly better version, or the effect is so marginal that it doesn't matter, which is slightly above bad cards, which are bad cards, and then very bad cards. You know, your Zone Eaters, your Steel Scorpions, your uh, Missing Force maybe, there's, there's a lot of really weird bad cards that are just bad. Then below that is Normal Monsters, they're going to get their own tier, just... For clarity, a lot of normal monsters would go in very bad, or bad, or filler outclassed, but I think it's cleanest to just give them their own tier. And then at the very bottom is gimmick potential. Gimmick potential is cards that have weird interactions or don't do what you think they do. There's some overlap with design mistakes, but we're going to get there when we get there. We will be going over every set, and we're going to be going in set order. By which I mean we're going with Legend of Blue Eyes first, and then I think there's actually two video game promotional card sets that were released, and then there were some starter decks released. But we're also going to preserve the inset order as best as possible. We're also not going to be going over cards multiple times, so I'm going to try to keep out the redundancy. So I'm gonna start now. First card is Trihorn Dragon. So dark level 8, dragon type monster, with the rules text, an unworthy dragon with three sharp horns sprouting from its head. 2850, 2350. This card's secret rare. Does that make this the official first card to be introduced into the game? Ah, uh, don't know. A lot of people think it's blue eyes, but I guess, I guess technically the first card to be released in the game, and not particularly good. Well, that's okay. Next up is Blue Eyes White Dragon, level 8, light attribute, dragon. This legendary dragon is a powerful engine of destruction. Virtually invincible, very few have faced this awesome creature and lived to tail the tail. 3000 attack, 2500 defense. This card is all the way up at either meta at one point because it won world championships, 
or maybe even worth considering today in the dedicated Blue Eyes White Dragon deck. I, I'm leaning more towards meta at one point, though. Next is Hitosumi Giant. Level 4, Earth type, Beast Warrior, with the rules text a one eyed behemoth with thick, powerful arms made for delivering punishing blows. 1200 attack, 1000 defense. And it's a normal monster, so put it in normal tier. Next up, Flame Swordsman. This is our first fusion, I guess the first fusion introduced into the game. Level 5 fire attribute, warrior type monster. Fusion materials are Flame Manipulator and Masaki the Legendary Swordsman, both of which are in this set by the way. 1800 attack, 1600 defense. Would you believe it's all the way up in meta at one point, but this might be uh, this this might be a technicality because there are a lot of decks in before the extra deck was limited to 15 cards and you could just run three of every fusion monster card you have. Next up we have Skull Servant, and this card's fun. This is actually the very first card I have ever seen in the game. It is a level one dark attribute zombie type monster, a skeletal ghost that isn't strong but can mean trouble in large numbers. 300 attack, 200 defense. Uh, good? I don't know if we count Skull Servant's success as meta? I mean, you wouldn't be laughed out. Maybe you would be laughed out, but for different reasons. I think I think Skull Servant is a really fun card, especially when you get King of Skull Servant and then the entire white package later. I can see it going into different categories, but I have a soft spot for the card. First one I have ever seen in the game, and in the first combo I ever saw was Skull Servant, Metamorphosis into Thousand Eyes Restrict. Skull Servant design mistake? No way. This card's perfectly balanced. Okay. Next card is Dark Magician. The ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense. Just ignore like Sorcerer of Dark Illusion and Cosmo Queen. Just ignore all those others. And Demok and Magician of Black Chaos and any anyway. The ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense, I guess, at least for the set release. 2500, 2100. And... Uh, I'm, I'm going... Maybe we do need another tier that's good at one point. Let's go with good-ish. So we can better differentiate them. Next card, Gaia the Fierce Knight. Another level 7, this time Earth Warrior, a knight whose horse travels faster than the wind. His battle charge is a force to be reckoned with. There's an archetype sorta of built around this card, but I don't I don't think it's ever good. It's not good on release. I think it just goes in the normal tier. There's a lot of fun retrains for this. I don't know if any of them are ever top tier. I don't think the archetype runs the vanilla. There's much better options. Good for lore, though. It's a, a very fun lore card. Next up is Celtic Guardian, or Celtic Guardian. I'm not sure about that one. Earth Attribute, level 4, warrior-type monster. An elf who learned to wield a sword. He baffles enemies with lightning-swift attacks. 1400, 1200. And straight to normal tier. <laughs> Which is, I don't know. <laughs> You're going to be hearing a lot of that in early sets. But that's okay. It's a little bit crazy because if we take a peek, there are some really strong cards in this set. And then like half the set is normal monsters. And that applies to quite a few different sets. Uh, basic Insect is out of order. But it's another normal monster, so normal tier. Earth attribute, level 2. Insect type, usually found traveling in swarms. This creature's ideal environment is the forest. 500 attack, 700 defense. Normal monster. Next up is Mammoth Graveyard. Earth attribute, level 3. Dinosaur, 
a mammoth that protects the graves of its pact abs- and is absolutely merciless when facing grave robbers. 1200 attack, 800 defense. Normal monster. Pretty cool lore, though. Like, mammoths do mourn their dead is one, is one of the interesting things. Or I guess contemporary elephants mourn their dead and have grief. It's really interesting to see some of the lore behind the card. Next up is Silverfang. Earth attribute, level 3, beast type monster. A snow wolf that's beautiful to the eye, but absolutely vicious in battle. 1200 attack, 800 defense. Isn't that Mammoth Graveyard stats? Like, exactly? Oh, it is exactly. <laughs> they go in the same tier. <laughs> Next up is Dark Gray. Again, level 3, Earth Attribute, Beast-type monster. Entirely gray. This beast has rarely been seen by mortal eyes. 800 attack, 900 defense. Some of the pictures are a little small, too. Next up is Trial of Nightmare. Dark Attribute, level 4, Fiend-type monster. This fiend passes judgment on enemies that are locked in the coffin. 1300 attack, 900 defense. One of the cool things about looking at every single card released is we actually get to see some of the alternate artwork. Now there are some cards that I'm not going to be showing off, um, specifically like Soul of the Pure because that one's got self-harm, and there are a few other cards that might still be a little bit too risque. Petite Dragon, Ultimate Dragon, we're not there yet. Next is Nimu Riko. Dark attribute, level 3, spellcaster type, a childlike creature that controls a sleep fiend to beckon enemies to eternal slumber. 800 attack, 700 defense, and it's a normal monster. A little sad. It looks like a shrimp to me. Or maybe like a snake. It's, it's weird. Next up, this is actually the 15th card in the set, or the 14th card if you don't count the secret rare at the beginning, which is so close, it's so sad. The 13th grave is the dark attribute, level 3, zombie type monster, with the rules text, a zombie that suddenly appeared from plot 13, an empty grave, 1200 attack, 900 defense. I guess this is, like, slightly better than Mammoth Graveyard and Silver Fang, which I think is fun. Next up is Charubin the Fire Knight, combination of Monster Egg and Hinotama Soul. This is a fire attribute, level 3, pyro fusion type monster. 1100 attack, 800 defense, and this is, this is crazy. It's not just goodish. It has been played in fusion decks because there wasn't a limit and you could just bring out anything with metamorphosis or magical scientist or there's actually a few different ways that you could bring them out. I'm actually going to put it into worth considering today. Hear me out. I think instant fusion specifically to get this card out might be worth considering. And that's just because of the combination of type, attribute, and level making it okay for certain synchro or XC strategies. I know there's a bit of an opportunity cost because you gotta have it in your extra deck, but I think there's just a little glimmer of potential for this card. And a few other cards are, are gonna fit in that category as well. Next up is Flame Manipulator. Fire Attribute, level 3, Spellcaster. Ooh, a Pyromancer. This spellcaster attacks enemies with fire-related spells, such as Sea of Flames and Wall of Fire. 900 attack, 1000 defense. I don't know if Sea of Flames is a card, but we did get Firewall much later, and it's like pyro support, and it's a pretty good card, so pretty good for the time at least. But this is just a normal monster. We're not really going to care too much about fusion material, because you didn't, you didn't use most of these cards as fusion monsters. Okay. Next up is Monster Egg, another fusion material. It is Earth Attribute, level 3, warrior type monster, for some reason. A warrior hidden within an egg 
and attacks enemies by flinging eggshells. Okay. I don't, I don't see it. It looks like a fiend to me. Maybe a dragon if you stretch it. 600 attack, 900 defense, normal tier. Next up is Firegrass. Earth attribute, level 2, plant type monster. A fire breathing plant found growing near volcanoes. 700 attack, 600 defense. Going to put it in the normal tier. It's sad. All these level 2 normal monsters. I wish at one point it was meta because you had like human wave tactics and law of the normal and Konami was really trying to get people to play them, but they just weren't good. Next up is Dark Fire Dragon. Dark attribute. Level 4. Dragon, obviously. Fusion type monster requiring fire grass and petite dragon. Petite dragon being the strongest dragon. 1500 attack, 1250 defense. And I'm actually going to put it next to the Fire Knight, which is probably controversial, <laughs> but it is a level 4 option. Next is Dark King of the Abyss, and if this was a lore tier list, it would be way up there, but this is based on, slightly based on competitive viability, with a few exceptions. So this is a Dark, level 3, Fiend type monster. It's said that this king of the netherworld once had the power to rule over the dark. 1200 attack, 800 defense. This is an, another... It's another Silver Fang and Mammoth Graveyard clone, which is weird. Next up is Fiend Reflection number 2. Light attribute, level 4, winged beast. So I guess it's the thing holding the mirror, not the mirror. A winged beast that summons reinforcements with a hand mirror. 1100 attack, 1400 defense. Should read the description before I start talking about them. Ah, where is Fiend Reflection number one? That might actually be an OCG exclusive card, or maybe we get it in a tournament pack later. I really don't know, but normal tier. Next up is Fusionist. And I want to I wanna put it up in the worth considering today. But it's so hard. It's so hard to justify. Maybe we'll just keep it. Keep all the fusions together and meta at one point. And if you're very daring, then maybe you can play it. But what is Fusionist? It's an Earth Attribute, Level 3, Beast, Fusion Type Monster, Petite Angel, and Mystical Sheep Number 2. It's 900 Attack, 700 Defense, and not great. <laughs> it's 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 a pretty bad card, unless you can bring it out with Metamorphosis, or Magical Scientist, or Instant Fusion specifically. Where's the Ritualist and XYZist? There is a, a Synchronist, I think. Next up is Turtle Tiger. Water Attribute, level 4, Aquatype Monster. A tiger encased in a protective shell that attacks with razor-sharp fangs. 1,000 attack, 1,500 defense, and to normal tier. It's a bummer. Cool artwork, though. Next up is the most powerful dragon, Petite Dragon. Wind attribute, level 2, dragon-type monster. A very small dragon known for its vicious attacks. You know, great things come in small packages. 600 attack, ooh, 700 defense, ooh. Vicious, but not particularly strong but normal tier. Next up, Petite Angel. Light attribute, level three, fairy type, a quick moving and tiny fairy that's very difficult to hit. So it's gotta have a lot of defense points, right? 600 attack, 900 defense, normal tier. Womp womp. Petite Dragon to goodish. <sighs> Maybe all the way to good on release. Okay. Petite Dragon at the top of normal. There's a lot of talk about Petite Dragon. Next up, Hinotama Soul. Level 2, Pyrotype Monster. An intensely hot flame creature that rams anything standing in its way. 600 attack, 500 defense. Pretty filler. 
Next up is Aquamador. And I think this might actually escape the normal tier and go up to good on release. That's a lot of defense points. This is a water attribute, level 4, spellcaster type monster. A wizard of the waters that conjures a liquid wall to crush any enemies that oppose him. Oh, this is cool because Neo Aquamador shows you that wall. 1200 attack, 2000 defense. I don't, I don't know if I'd say that 2k defenders are really good in old formats, but I think there's something that can be said about just having a lot of defense points until you get to cards like Drill Roid, Ninja Grandmaster Sasuke, DD Warrior Lady, Exiled Force. Walls did have a place in the metagame. Okay, next up, Kagamusha of the Blue Flame. It's Earth type. Obviously, level 2, warrior, serving as a double for the ruler of the blue flames. He's a master swordsman that wields a fire blade. 800 attack, 400 defense. This card is um, a Shein card. I don't know if that's ever going to matter, but it hasn't had an errata, I think, yet. Next up, Flame Ghost, where... It's going to go to meta at one point by technicality. This one I've actually seen several fusion decks in specifically the 2007 competitive overview we're playing it. Dark attribute, level 3, zombie fusion, with the materials, skull servant. Ooh, that could be useful. Now you have a way to search out skull servant with like prisma and, and dissolve rock. I don't know if this is ever going to be relevant, but it's got some gimmick potential to it. 1,000 attack, 800 defense. Skull Servant made his way into meta at one point. Oh yeah. Okay. We get to bring up Skull Servant to a tier. I like Flame Ghost. Still, another instant fusion target. Specifically, if you want to get a dark attribute fusion, I, I think this is a good level 3 to look at. There's so much potential, but just because of instant fusion. Next up, Two Mouth Dark Ruler. Level 3, Dinosaur. I guess it looks like a thunder to me. Earth Attribute, level 3, Dinosaur. A dinosaur with two deadly jaws. It stores electricity in its horn and releases high voltage bolts from the mouth on its back. 900 attack, 700 defense, normal tier. Next up is Dissolve Rock, Earth Attribute, Level 3, Rock-type Monster, a monster born in the lava pits. It generates intense heat that can melt away its enemies. 900 attack, 1000 defense. Straight to the normal tier. Next up, Root Water. Water Attribute, Level 3, Fish, an amphibian capable of calling up a massive tidal wave from the dark seas to wipe out enemy monsters. Amphibian, eh? Maybe an aqua or a reptile? I guess you can be a fish, though. Ooh, this is getting a little, little bottom-heavy because of all the normal monsters. Next up, the Furious Sea King. Another water attribute. Level 3, aqua-type monster. Grand King of the Seven Seas. He's able to summon massive tidal waves to drown the enemy. But wait, high tide... High the fish can do that too. 800 attack, 700 defense, normal monster. Green Phantom King. Oh, I think this is actually a female card in the Bondi set. I think this is one of the three sisters that got changed significantly, I guess. Earth attribute, level 3, plant type monster. The youthful king of the forest lives in a green world abundant with trees and wildlife. 500 attack, 1600 defense. 1600 defense is a little high for a level 3, but this is actually outclassed by one particular monster. We'll, we'll get to it when we get to it. Ray and temperature. Light attribute, level 3. Fairy type monster. The sun and the north wind join hands to deliver a devastating combination of heat and gale force winds. With a mighty 1,000 attack, 1,000 defense. Straight to normal tier. It's a little sad. 
that these cards have such great flavor text, but not exactly any power in the main game. Next up, King Fog, another one. A lot of these cards are parallel. They seem to, to come in pairs. But this one is Dark, level 3, Fiend-type monster. A fiend that dwells in a blinding curtain of smoke. 1,000 attack, 900 defense, straight to normal tier. Mystical Sheep number 2 is Earth, level 3, a monstrous, a monstrous sheep with a long tail for hypnotizing opponents. I can't read. A monstrous sheep with a long tail for hypnotizing <laughs> A monstrous sheep with a long tail for hypnotizing enemies. I keep looking at the tail, and I'm not looking at the text, and it's ha making it difficult to read. 800 attack, 1,000 defense, straight to normal tier. Next is Masaki, the legendary swordsman. Earth, level 4, warrior-type monster. Hey, you can search it with Rhoda. You can also special summon it from hand with X Saber Wayne, I think, which is totally good. Legendary Swordmaster Masaki is a veteran of over 100 battles. Straight to normal tier. Kurama. A vicious bird that attacks from the skies with its whip-like tail. Oh, I just got so excited about the text that I skipped the, the normal introduction. Wind attribute, level 3, winged beast, 800 attack, 800 defense. Straight to normal tier. No idea why. It's just so exciting. Next up, we're finally to equip spells. So Legend of Blue Eyes is actually pretty unique. I think there's just normal, equip, field. Are there any continuous spells in Legend of Blue Eyes? I'm not sure there are off the top of my head. So we don't even have each type of spell card represented yet. And the first wave of... Equip spells are underwhelming, to say the least. But it's a legendary sword. It can't be bad. Equip only to a warrior monster. It gains 300 attack and defense. I'm tempted to put it in very bad. This is not enough of a boost. Equip cards in general have a weakness that you can really easily go two for one. Not very legendary. There's, if you haven't noticed, there's a whole bunch of these cards that come from Forbidden Memories, and they affect most of the types in the game, but I was a little kid, and I thought there was one for every single type, and I tried to collect them all, and I'm disappointed seeing the set spoiler, and you just can't get them all. Next up, though, same in the series, is Beast Fangs. Equip spell. A beast-type monster equipped with this card increases its attack and defense by 300 points goes into the bad tier. Uh, some of these cards have had errata, and usually I just pick the prettier picture unless it's effect changing errata. So keep in mind these can only be equipped to their specific type of monster. Some of the pictures online are, are very fuzzy. This is another one that's had errata. Violet Crystal, equip spell. This card is not treated as a crystal card. So you can't search it with Crystal Beast Spell and Trap support. Very important, because you're using a combination of Crystal Beasts and Zombies. It goes in the bad tier. It's just not worth running a card. Book of Secret Art has some pretty good art. Equip Spell, a Spellcaster-type monster equipped with this card, increases the attack and defense by 300 points. Into the bad. Next up, Power of Kaishin. Equip only to an Aqua-type monster, it gains 300 attack and defense. Equip spell. Aqua support, put it in your Mermail deck. Next up, Dragon Capture Jar. Change all face-up Dragon-type monsters on the field to defense position. Also, they cannot change their battle positions. I think this is a continuous, not a trigger effect. So, uh, Specifically, Anti-Dragon Tech. I don't know if it goes in bad or filler outclassed. Because it's pretty specific. I guess this is technically a Floodgate. I mean, it's potentially a card that you could put in your side deck. 
keep in mind for for the much older format. Put it in bad. I guess it can go in top of bad. So we just had a set of equip cards, and now we're going to go through a cycle of field spells. First is Forest. Increases the attack and defense of all insect, beast, plant, and beast warrior type monsters by 200 points. These are weird. They're asymmetric, they also don't hit every type, and I think beast warrior actually is affected by two of them. This can help your opponent, so maybe it goes in very bad. Next card in this series is Wasteland. Increases the attack and defense of all dinosaur, zombie, and right type monsters by 200 points. Also putting it in very bad. Mountain increases the attack and defense of all dragon, winged beast, and thunder type monsters by 200 points. Very interesting. I think these are adaptations from both the anime and Forbidden Memories, where field advantage was more of a thing, but they're just super underwhelming in the main game. Next up, Solgen increases the attack and defense of all beast warrior and warrior type monsters by 200 points. Because it's a field. I guess this is the most literal field spell, or Umi. Umi is different from all the others for unknown reason. Umi actually has some cards that specifically rely on it. Quite a lot of cards that specifically rely on it. I don't know where to put it, though. Because I don't think any of the Umi cards are actually good. And when you use Umi, you don't... You don't play that. You play like a Legendary Ocean or Lemuria or one of the many, many, many retrains. One of the funny things that you can do with this card is, since other cards are treated as Umi, I didn't realize this, but you're not supposed to play more than three copies total. So if you're running three copies of a Legendary Ocean and three copies of Umi, your deck is illegal. But what does Umi do? It increases the attack and defense of all fish, sea serpent, thunder, and aqua-type monsters by 200 points. But it also decreases the attack and defense of all machine and pyro-type monsters by 200 points. So this one can actually hurt some of the other ones? It's, it's a little bit weird. That effect is... Okay, next up is Yami, another field spell. Increases the attack and defense of all fiend and spellcaster type monsters by 200 points. Also decreases the attack and defense of all fairy type monsters by 200 points. I, I still think it's a really bad effect. I don't think anyone would ever think to side deck these cards, but that's okay. Oh, by the way, Umi is like ocean or sea, and Yami is darkness. Next up, we're finally getting to the good cards, or at least a batch of good cards, because we have Dark Hole. Normal spell, destroy all monsters on the field. Just one line of text, real simple effect. Uh, it's definitely meta at one point. I think it was even banned at one point. Put it above Flame Swordsman, I guess. I don't think it's worth considering today. Dark Hole is like immediately outclassed by Regeki. Normal spell, Destroy all monsters your opponent controls. I'd say that this is almost strictly better than Dark Hole. And I think the first candidate for actually worth considering today. Rageki is a good card, but I don't think it's the best card in the game. I actually think that one of the contenders for the best card of the game is coming up. It's at the bottom. Shh, no spoilers. Next up, Red Medicine. Normal spell. Increase your life points by 500 points. Very simple effect. Very bad effect, though. It is a, a long question. How many life points do you need on a life-gaining effect for it to be worth one card? And the answer is way more than 500. I think in one of the video games, specifically Dian Kito, Cure Master gave you 5,000 life points. And I'm like, I think I would consider going minus one for 5,000 life points. Ooh, contender for the... I can't say it with a straight face. Contender for the worst card in the game is Sparks. It technically has a positive effect, inflicting 200 points of direct damage to your opponent's life points, which is a little bit wordy. Next up, Hinotama. 
but not Hinotama Soul. Inflict 500 points of damage to your opponent. Well, it's it's better than Sparks. It's better than Red Medicine. I think I think I've actually seen it in a burn deck before, like a very early version. Uh, uh, goodish. We'll put it in goodish. It's definitely outclassed. There are better cards even in this set than Hinotama, but getting to that critical mass of burn cards was a little hard. We'll put it in goodish just for now. Next up, ooh, Meta Breaker. We have Fisser. Normal spell, destroy the face up monster your opponent controls that has the lowest attack. If it's a tie, you even get to choose. Where does Fisser go? It goes all the way to meta at one point. Not just meta at one point, limited at one point. It's so strong. It was like a staple. So strong. Actually, Treple's in a, in a pretty similar boat. Normal Trap? The first Normal Trap we've gotten to. I guess the first trap in general we've gotten to. Oh, no, wait. We got Dragon Capture Jar. Forgot. This is just not very exciting. When your opponent Normal or Flip summons a monster with 1,000 or more attack, target that monster, destroy that target. Oh, it targets now. I try to get very new versions of the card whenever possible just because they clarify targeting. And we're going to put Trap Hole, I think, right next to Fisser. Because it was played, it was even limited in the 1999 ban list. It was so strong. I think it's worth putting way up there. I think it's always been a good contender, and, and with Rufflasia specifically, it has a lot more utility than you'd think. Because that 1,000 point is significant because some things get under bottomless trap hole or giant trap hole. Trap hole does have trap trick support. Meta for sure. Well, at meta at one point. I, I completely understand if, if people think it's it's garbage now. Next up, uh, polymerization. Well, it's definitely good on release. It's definitely good-ish. It's been meta in a few formats. I'm thinking original polymerization all the way up at worth considering today. There are so many ways to search this card. You got Fusion, Fusion Sage, you got a whole bunch of elemental heroes that specifically search or recur polymerization. You got Fusion Reserve, you got King of the Swamp. But what does polymerization do? Oh, by the way, if you have an original Legend of Blue Eyes polymerization, you're clueless. It just says fuses two monsters together, and it doesn't explain what a fusion summon is at all. But it's a normal spell. Fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. There are a lot of better options than than polymerization. Even, even the polymerization retrain fusion substitute, it, I think, is worth considering today as well. But it still has some some effect. Next up, remove trap. Ooh, ooh. I don't know where to put it. I really don't know where to put it. This is like your only way to deal with trap cards, specifically face up trap cards. So I guess so far it only hits dragon capture jar. Normal spell: select one face up trap card on the field and destroy it. Very simple text completely outclassed by Mystical Space Typhoon. I, do, I know, it's just, does it go in filler outclass? Does it go in bad? Does it go in very bad? Maybe it goes in top of bad. Next up, two-pronged attack. Someone specifically requested this card and cards to consider just because it's, it's so bad. It's interesting to think from a design perspective. This is a normal trap. I'm sorry. Select and destroy two of your monsters and one of your opponent's monsters. And you got to read it a couple times because you're just thinking, oh, this is Icarus attack, but it's not. It is not Gemini Spark. It's not Icarus attack. It's a three for one. One of the worst uses of card advantage and board presence in the game. It's very, very bad. Uh, I think I think select is non-targeting language. 
And I think this is the most recent version of the card. I'm not sure if it ever got another reprint, but it's very bad. Next up, Mystical Elf. And I think, I think actually good on release for Mystical Elf. Just 2,000 defense is a, a pretty big number. Light Attribute, level 4, Spellcaster. A delicate elf that lacks offense but has a terrific defense, backed by Mystical Power. Android Attack, 2,000 defense. Next up, Tyhone, level 4, Wind Attribute, Winged Beast. Capable of firing cannonballs from its mouth for long range attacks. This creature is particularly effective in mountain battles. I don't think they mean mountain field spell. Maybe they do. Straight to normal tier. Next up, Beaver Warrior. Ooh, this is a, a meme card. Earth Attribute, level 4, Beast Warrior type monster. What this creature lacks in size. It makes up for in defense when battling in the prairie. 1200 attack, 1500 defense. This is a card that actually has had an errata that's not reflected on the card, and it makes me sad. It makes me real sad. For one thing, your card doesn't do what it what it says it does, but I was going to do a cards to consider vi video because this has a very particular upside, or at least it did at one point. We have Gravedigger Ghoul on normal spell. Select two monsters from your opponent's graveyard, these monsters are removed from play for the remainder of the duel. Now this card just banishes the monsters. It doesn't even prevent them from using them or, or moving them from the banished zone. Next up, Curse of Dragon. It's, it's a normal monster. It's a level 5 normal monster with 2,000 attack, which actually isn't bad for the time. That's, that's pretty decent. I remember reading somewhere that Earl of Demise... Also, 2,000 attack was, was seen as a pretty decent card on release, and that's a later set. It's definitely good, but what is it? We'll, we'll keep down here just for a second. Curse of Dragon is a dark attribute, level 5 monster, dragon type, a wicked dragon that taps into dark forces to execute a powerful attack. 2,000 attack, 1,500 defense. And where does it go, though? I think... It fits into meta at one point. I'm not sure if specifically Curse of Dragon gets into this position because you could use a lot of different dragons, but in your Hieratic deck, this was an option to get a level 5 dragon on board so that then you can Xyz into us some other cards. So I'm gonna say meta. Next up, Carbonala Warrior. Earth Attribute, level 4, warrior type fusion <laughs> monster. Fusion Materials, M Warrior number one, and M Warrior number two. It's level four. Uh, 1500 attack, 1200 defense. That's not the important part, but level four, Warrior. It's gonna go into either meta at one point or maybe gimmick, just because you can use instant fusion. And I have seen it in deck lists, so. Fusions get a technicality, Hieratics get a technicality. Normal monsters are, are getting the benefit of the doubt because, you know, they sort of need all the help they can get. Except for Giant Soldier of Stone. This card is ridiculous. It's an Earth Attribute, level 3, Rock-type monster. A giant warrior made of stone. A punch from this creature has Earth-shaking results. 1300 attack, 2000 defense on a level 3. This card is really good. Like, it's better than this level 4 Aquamador. It's better than, than Mystic Elf. This card is crazy strong for being a level 3 monster, and I, I actually think that this is a design oversight, that the card is just way too strong. I don't want to put it in design mistake because that's just ridiculous, but it's crazy. Woo! And next up, Urabi. This is another target that you can play in Dino Rabbit. It's an Earth Attribute, level 4, Dinosaur Monster. Fast on its feet, this dinosaur rips enemies to shreds with its sharp claws. I think it might go good on release. It's got 1500 attack. That's a pretty big number at this point. I'm thinking Robbie might go good on release. 
It might also fit into filler outclass though. Next up is the other flagship dragon, the Red Eyes Black Dragon. Blue Eyes represents power, but Red Eyes represents the potential. And how does that potential pay off? Uh, we'll see. This is a dark attribute, level 7, dragon type monster, a ferocious dragon with a deadly attack. 2400 attack, 2000 defense, and there's like a whole archetype that's that's built around it. And I'd say overall some of the red eyes support is is sort of close to meta. There's definitely been people attempting to play meta red eyes in contemporary game. Is it worth considering today? Uh, maybe? I think goodish is a good place to put it, though. Not in the context of, of Legend of Blue Eyes. In Legend of Blue Eyes, this is pretty bad. You, you would not want to play this. Next up, Reaper of the Cards. Dark Attribute, level 5, Flip Effect Monster. So that's different. Fiend, Flip, Flip. Select one trap card on the field and destroy it. If the selected card is set, pick up the card and see the card. If it's a trap card, it is destroyed. If it is a spell card, return it to its original position. Ah, uh, is this removal? I guess it's removal. Trap removal, it's, it's, it's pretty bad though. You got a tribute to summon it. I think the only redeeming quality to this card or maybe not even redeeming quality. I think the only notable quality of this card is 1380 attack, 1930 defense. Specifically because of the anime. I think there was a field spell that is it really meta? If it was level 4, definitely meta. But I just can't I don't know if we can even put it in in uh, we'll put it in filler outclass next to trap remover because, you know, similar function. If this were a once per turn uh, non-flip effect, it could be legitimate. Oh, there's lots of cards. Be better removal, but even Swarm of Locusts, I think, is the flips itself back face down and then you can do it. There's a secret benefit to the Reaper of the cards, one I had never considered. It makes your opponent do math which is extremely powerful debuff you can't negate. Oh, that is true. Next up, Woody Phantom, dark attribute, level four, fiend type monster, dressed in a night black tuxedo. This creature presides over death. Oh, that took a dark turn really quickly. 1400 attack, 1300 defense. Uh, I, think, I think we might put it in filler outclassed. I think higher in normal than a lot of cards. Well, not Petite Dragon, but I don't know where to put it. I guess we'll we'll put it in normal for now. Larvis. Earth attribute, level 3, beast type monster. A fast-moving bird-like creature that strangles opposing monsters with its long, thin arms. How do you grab, though? with those arms. They look sharp. I don't, I don't know. 800 attack, 1000 defense, into the normal. Hard armor is just a terrible name for a card. Earth attribute, level 3, warrior type monster for some reason. It looks like a machine. A living suit of armor that attacks enemies with a bone jarring tackle. And what's the sword for? 300 attack, 1200 defense, normal monster. Next up, Mean Green Mother from Outer Space. We have Maneater, Earth Attribute, Level 2, Plant-Type Monster, Maneating Plant with Poison Feelers for attacking enemies. 800 Attack, 600 Defense. Man, if only there was, there was that Level 2 or lower Normal deck that was actually decent for one point, then a lot of these filler cards might have some more potential, but it's sad. Eventually, sets are going to have less and less normal monsters, so we'll get there eventually. Next up, M Warrior number one, 
I think the M stands for magnet. Shh. Earth attribute, level 3, warrior. Specializing in combination attacks, this warrior uses magnetism to block an enemy's escape. 1,000 attack, 500 defense, normal tier. In warrior number 2, the sequel. Also earth attribute, level 3, warrior type monster. Specializing in combination attacks, this monster is equipped with a tough, magnetically coated armor. It's a little cute, though, that you add the offensive option, and this is the defensive option, and their stats are reversed. Cool. And then you have, have Carbonala Warrior over here, who has the sum of their attack and defense points. Which is great flavor, but not enough to save them from the normal tier. Next up, we have Spirit of the Harp. And I think... 2000 defense, I, th I think it's going to be good on release. Put it right next to Mystical Elf because it's got the same stats. Light attribute, level 4, fairy type monster, a spirit that soothes the soul with the music of its heavenly harp. 800 attack, 2000 defense. Um, n not the worst option. Next up is Armael with a second L to make it difficult to pronounce. Earth attribute, level three, warrior type monster. A strange warrior who manipulates three deadly blades with hands and his tail. Sort of like uh, three sword style with Ro and Oazoro. Only 700 attack, 1300 defense is not quite the, the world's strongest swordsman, or at least a contender for the world's strongest swordsman. To the normal tier. Terra the Terrible. Ooh. You're setting yourself up for the very bad. Dark attribute, level 4, Fiend. Known as a swamp dweller, this creature is a minion of the dark forces. 1200 attack, 1300 defense. A lot of these generalist cards are not great. It, it'd be a lot better if it had lots of attack or lots of defense. No, they'd just feel like normal filler. Next up, Frenzied Panda. Oh, this card actually has a, a retrain, Gyakugiri Panda. That's a pretty cool card. But what about the original? It's Earth Attribute, level 4, Beast-type monster, a savage beast that carries a big bamboo stick for beating down its enemies. <laughs> it's, it's a frenzied panda. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a little too silly. <laughs> it's a normal monster, 1200 attack, 1000 defense. Kumu Toko. Or maybe it's Kumo O Toko. This card is actually really freaky if you look at the full art because it's got human legs for some reason. Like real long human legs at the bottom of it. I don't suggest looking it up. Earth Attribute, level 3, insect type. A massive intelligent spider that traps enemies with webbing. 700 attack, 1400 defense. Straight to normal. And then for the next card, we're actually going to take a turn. Here is that special copy of Metabat I was alluding to during the stream, but couldn't quite figure out how to get the webcam to work while live. It is a zeroth like edition test print, directly. on the original clay tablet no less. I have been playing this game for quite a long time. But what does Metabat do? Dark attribute, level 2, fiend type monster, an eyeball fiend created by a servant of the wicked. It uses Dark Blast to blow away its enemies. 800 attack, 400 defense, goes straight to normal tier. We have another altered art with Enchanting Mermaid. It's water attribute, level three, fish. A beautiful mermaid that lures voyagers to a watery grave. 1200 attack, 900 defense, next, I, I'm guessing Fire Yaro, like Robo Yaro, like that. I'm not sure if it's Fire Yaro, Fire Yaro, weird card name. Fire type, level 4, Pyro, ooh, very fitting. A malevolent creature wrapped in flames that attacks enemies with intense fire. 1300 attack, 1000 defense. Red Eyes is part of DPI Engine, so yes, it is actually meta right now. Ooh. 
Where did I put red eyes? Can put it in worth considering at least. But back to Fire Yaro goes into normal tier. Next up, Dragoness the Wicked Knight. Wind attribute, level 3, warrior, fusion type monster. Fusion materials are Armail and One-Eyed Shield Dragon. 1200 attack, 900 defense. And that technicality means that it was meta at one point. But <laughs> I still think that it's got potential with Instant Fusion. The next card, One-Eyed Shield Dragon, does not have potential, but I just love the artwork because it's got the shield on its belly. And it's just, how else do you have a shield if you have no arms? It, it just cracks me up. But it is One-Eyed Shield Dragon, Wind Attribute, Level 3, Dragon-type monster. This dragon wears a shield, not only for its own protection, but also for ramming its enemies. So this thing body slams. 700 attack, 1300 defense, normal tier. Almost done with the normal monsters. There's a few more, but now we get an intermission with some more equip cards. We have Dark Energy. Equip spell. A fiend-type monster equipped with this card increases its attack and defense by 300 points. This is another one in that set, and I'm just going to put it in the bad tier next to Power of Kaishin. There, there are several of these. I don't know why insects get laser cannon armor, though. It's just... I wouldn't expect that. Like acid fangs or something. I guess acid fangs go to beasts. Anyway, equip spell. An insect-type monster equipped with this card increases its attack and defense by 300 points. into the bad tier. Next up, Vile Germs. A plant-type monster equipped with this card increases its attack and defense by 300 points. Why plants? Are those tribbles? Or critters? It's so weird looking. I don't, I don't like this card. It's a little unnerving. Why do plants have germs? Why are plants biting people? Next up, Silver Bow and Arrow. Another equip spell, a fairy type monster equipped with this card increases its attack and defense by 300 points. And it goes next to its friends. Same thing with dragon treasure. A dragon type monster equipped with this card increases its attack and defense by 300 points. As far as design space, I do not like this approach of like every type getting a clone of the same spell. Yu-Gi-Oh! has a lot of inconsistencies and weird design space, but I, I do not like this design direction. Next up, Electro Whip. A Thunder-type monster equipped with this card increases its attack and defense by 300 points. Also bad. Mystical Moon. Equip spell. Equip only to a Beast Warrior-type monster, specifically Beast Warrior. A little bit weird. It gains 300 attack and defense. I guess it's like lycanthropy, where the moon makes the werewolf transition. I don't know. Not transition, transform. Next up, stop defense. Normal spell. Select one of your opponent's monsters and switch it to attack position. If the card is face down, flip it face up. If the card has a flip effect, it is activated immediately. Boo, it doesn't turn off flip effects. Which might have been the only saving grace for this card, but this card is really bad. Yes, you can get around walls, but you're going minus one to get around walls. I don't I don't think it's worth it. Very generously, we might put in filler outclassed. But I think I think it's okay to put in bad or very bad. Another equip spell? Machine conversion factory. Quite a lot of these. Here's the machine one. I'm not sure if we've encountered a machine type monster yet surely there's a machine in all of these though be funny if you couldn't even use this card a machine type monster equipped with this card increases its attack and defense by 300 points i have no idea why these aren't all together probably because of print run and and randomization and boosters Ooh, raise body heat where is raise body heat way down here a dinosaur-type monster equipped with this card increases its attack and defense by 300 points. 
This is followed by Follow Wind. A winged beast type monster equipped with this card increases its attack and defense by 300 points. Is there an echo in here? We're finally getting into some more interesting cards. Okay, so red medicine is 500 points. What if we increase that number to 600 points? It's still not worth it. Goblin Secret Remedy, normal spell. Increase a selected player's life points by 600 points. It's a little bit weird because you could heal your opponent and there's not a lot of cards that can do that. So in combination with bad reaction to Samuchi, this could be a card that burns for 600. But if you're, if you're burning for 600, you might as well use the next card, Final Flame. And the OCG artwork is actually crazy. This is, this is way out there. I thought Last Day of Witch, which implied crucifixion, was a little crazy, but this has someone burning on it. E even the TCG artwork is a bit restrained, but also a bit, bit graphic. Inflict 600 points of direct damage to your opponent's life points. And this card I've actually seen in meta deck lists, believe it or not. And it's just there was not a lot of good burn options or people uh, people maybe not understood which burn options were good. So I've, I've seen it in some stall burn decks from the 2004 to 2007 range. Next up, Swords of Revealing Light. And this card is pretty obvious. It goes all the way up to meta at one point. Uh, we'll put it we'll put it next to Dark Hole. And this card wasn't exactly meta defining, but it was really strong for years. Like it was at one and you'd play one copy of Swords of Revealing Light and there was not a lot of spell and trap removal in the game, so you just sort of got three turns of your opponent not doing anything. But what else does the card do? It actually does more than just that. Getting ahead of myself. Normal spell? Flip all monsters your opponent controls face up. This card remains on the field for three of your opponent's turns. While this card is face up on the field, monsters your opponent controls cannot declare an attack. So it reveals all the face down monsters, but it triggers flip effects, so that's not the best. This card was still extremely impactful in the metagame, and I think it's just lack of spell and trap removal more than anything. You're not going to see this card played anytime soon. Next up, oh, there is a machine, Metal Dragon. It takes Steel Ogre of the Grotto and Lesser Dragon. This is a wind attribute, level 6, fusion, machine type monster. I think Steel Ogre Grotto number 1 is the only other machine in the, in, in the set at this point. So machine conversion factory, very useful. 1850 attack, 1700 defense, and by technicality, it has been meta at one point. But I don't think that this has any future potential because it's level 6, so you can't bring it out with instant fusion. Spike Cedra, water attribute, level 5, sea serpent. Using the spikes sprouting from its body, this creature stabs its opponents and floods them with electricity. 1600 attack, 1300 defense, did I mention it's level 5? This card would actually be good on release if it were, or if it were lower. I'm thinking about just putting it in bad. Like it escapes normal tiering and goes all the way up to bad. Because you can't bring it out of the deck with Mother Grizzly like you can a lot of the other ones. Just, hmm. Next up. Tripwire Beast. Earth Attribute, level 4. Thunder type monster. This creature attacks with electromagnetic waves. 1200 attack, 1300 defense. I think those are Terra the Terrible stats, actually. Straight to normal. Skull Red Bird. Wind Attribute, level 4. Winged Beast. This monster swoops down and attacks with a rain of knives stored in its wings. This might actually be a reference to one of the Trials of Hercules, where the birds had sharp feathers. I thought that was cool. 
But look at that massive 1550 attack. And the 50 points really matters. 1200 defense, and I think it's actually good for its time, which is just ridiculous. Higher than Urabi, but maybe not higher than the walls. One of the other effect monsters in, the, in, in Legend of Blue Eyes, I think there are five total. Arm Ninja, Earth Attribute, Level 1, Warrior Type Monster. Flip. Target one spell card on the field. Destroy that target. If the target is set, reveal it and destroy it if it is a spell card. Otherwise, return it to its original position. Flower Wolf. Level 5, Earth Attribute, Beast, Fusion Type Monster. What is, what is that text? Fusion. Silver Fang plus Dark World Borns. That's weird. Is this the only card like that? Is this from the original printing where it says fusion before the fusion materials? Just really odd. 1800 attack, 1400 defense, and it fits into, I guess we should call this the fusion tier. Maneater Bug. Earth attribute, level two, insect type monster, flip. Target one monster on the field, destroy that target. 450 attack, 600 defense, all the way up to meta at one point. Like This card isn't just good on release. This card was, was just played. It, it saw quite a lot of play, more than I expected. Dark Dragoon saw a bit of play, and Dark Magician did too as material for it. It's gone now that Anaconda is banned, but still. Okay, we could put Dark Magician in meta at one point. Probably higher than Skull Servant. Put it next to Blue Eyes so they can be friends. Next up, Sandstone. Earth, level 5, rock type monster. Appears from underground and attacks with long, snake like tentacles. 1300 attack, 1600 defense. It's so bad. It's very bad. Let's put it next to, to Spike Cedra. It's just. Stats are so bad. Okay. Not higher than Skull Servant, we'll put it back down one. Hane Hane. Earth, level 2, beast type, flip effect. Select one monster in the field, return it to the owner's hand. I'm a little torn, because this card is definitely good on release. I don't know if it ever saw any meta play. But it's a decent option. I'm, I'm just going to say good on release. There's not a lot of effect monsters to choose from. Is it better than the walls? Probably... Probably not, though. Misai Ruzame. Water attribute, level 5. Fish-type monster. A missile-launching fish protected by deadly spikes. What? You can't get laser beams on the sharks? This card's weird. 1400 attack, 1600 defense. Uh, real close to Spike Cedra, actually, so we'll put them together. Mm, we could put Hane Hane in good ish. Here's the machine Steel Ogre Grotto, number one. Earth attribute, level five, machine type monster. A steel idol worshipped in the land of machines. 1400 attack. 1800 defense goes next to the other level fives. It's just not very good. Oh, maybe it's a little higher though, because you can special summon it with giant rat for whatever that's worth. Oh, Misairu is a transliteration of missile. I should have caught that. Next up, lesser dragon. Wind attribute, level four, dragon type monster. A minor dragon incapable of breathing fire. Oh, I feel bad for it. 1200 attack. 1,000 defense. I like this card's artwork quite a lot, actually. <laughs> Wish it were better. Dark World Borns. Earth attribute, level 3, plant type monster. A thorny plant found in the Darklands that wraps itself around any unwary traveler. 1,200 attack, 900 defense. Not a Dark World card. This is Dark World as one word instead of two words. It's never going to come up. No one no one was trying to tech this into the Dark World deck. 
I need I need snow or scar to search Dark World Thorns. No one's ever thought about that. But I thought it was funny. And the Japanese name is Darklands. So it's double not a Dark Road card. Next up, Drooling Lizard. Earth attribute, level 3, reptile, a blood-sucking snake in human form that attacks any living being that passes nearby. 900 attack, 800 defense. Straight to normal tier. Drooling Lizard is meta? No way. Armored Starfish, though. Maybe. Water attribute, level 4, aqua type. A bluish starfish with a solid hide capable of fending off attacks. It's weird. Technically, this set tried to put one of each type in it. And it, it, they just all seem like filler. 850 attack, 1400 defense. Succubus Knight. This is another one that's had its art changed. Uh, the OCG art is actually much more revealing. It is Dark Attribute, level 5, Warrior, an unworthy warrior wizard, adept in casting death-dealing spells. 1650 attack, 1300 defense. I'm just going to put it in bad with the other level 5s. Next up, Monster Reborn. Another OCG art. I don't know why they censored Onks. Like, they're not religious icons. But Monster Reborn. Spell card. Very simple effect. Target one monster in either graveyard. Special summon it. Uh, I think this card is still worth considering today. But... Mm, maybe. It targets. It's a good combo extender, but only... I think other people have, have specifically said if your archetype doesn't already have enough combo extenders, think about running it. Otherwise, it's not great. This card can also steal games, and I, I just can't believe it's off the ban list. I think that Onks would be seen as crosses. That's weird. I don't know. It's, it technically is a religious icon, it's just from one from a very, very ancient religion. Ah, Pot of Greed. What does it do? Well, we can read the text. Normal spell, draw two cards. I think this might not be obvious, but we're putting it all the way up to design mistake. And it is simply because Pot of Greed has an unintentional effect of dramatically increasing the effect of input randomness. Because if you go first and you have Pot of Greed then you are at such a huge advantage. A lot of people say that Pot of Greed can come back because every single deck in the game can use it, but it's not like that. It's, it's really sad because this is such an iconic card that's never coming off the ban list. Ooh, Monster Reborn has additional potential since it can be used to disrupt your opponent's graveyard. I like that. I like that a lot. Same thing with the Transmigration Prophecy much later. Okay, and then the next five cards, I don't know how to rank, because they go together. It's right leg of the Forbidden One, left leg of the Forbidden One, right arm of the Forbidden One, left arm of the Forbidden One, and Exodia of the Forbidden One. I guess we read the text first. Dark Attribute, level one, Spellcaster, the Forbidden Right Leg Sealed by Magic. Whosoever breaks the seal will know infinite power. 200 attack, 300 defense, left leg of the Forbidden One. A forbidden left leg sealed by magic. Whosoever breaks the seal will know infinite power. 200 attack, 300 defense. Pretty similar. Right arm of the Forbidden One. Dark attribute, level 1, spellcaster type monster. The forbidden right arm sealed by magic. Whosoever breaks the seal will know infinite power. 200 attack, 300 defense. And then left arm of the Forbidden One. Dark attribute, level 1. Spellcaster, the forbidden left arm sealed by magic. Whosoever breaks the seal will know infinite power. I think, I think I know infinite power already. 200 attack, 300 defense. Okay, and then finally the head. Exodia the Forbidden One, dark attribute, level three, spellcaster, type monster. If you have right leg of the forbidden one, left leg of the forbidden one, right arm of the forbidden one, and left arm of the forbidden one. In addition to this card in your hand, 
you win the duel. It also has attack and defense points, 1,000, 1,000, but that's not a big deal. The level on all the pieces is actually really important because they're level 1, so you can bring them out for 1 for 1. Not a great idea. But more importantly, you can bring them out with, um, with Where Art Thou, and then you can sort them. Specifically, tutor from deck to hand. Let's see. How does Exodia look? So he looks sort of like that. It's hard. I feel like there should be a middle piece of Exodia. That's worse. <laughs> We're going to put him here. Which I think is weird. I think Exodia is both the design mistake worth considering today and meta at one point. Don't play an Exodia deck. It's not good. I, I don't think you should play one. But it is an option. I think they're always a little bit competitively viable. It has definitely been the meta at one point because I've seen Exodia decks top. But I, I still don't think it's healthy for the game. Oh, there are also Treasure Panda versions of Exodia that take advantage of it being level 1. Forgot about those. Exodia Skip Chest Day. <laughs> the belly of the Forbidden One. Ooh, this, the, the secret sixth piece of Exodia. Don't know when we're getting that one. Final card, Gaia the Dragon Champion. So I didn't realize this, but... Secret rare means that it's the first card and the last card in these early sets. So, Trihorn Dragon and Gaia the Dragon Champion aren't really listed. They're secret rare. They're one one card before the set begins and one card after the set begins. I, I just thought it was neat. As soon as Sangan and Witch come out, Exodia becomes good for a little while. Whew. Ooh, that's scary. Well, that's okay. Where does Gaia the Dragon Champion go? 2600 attack. Uh, let's read the card first. Gaia the Dragon Champion. Wind attribute. Level 7. Dragon fusion type monster. Materials are Gaia the Fierce Knight and Curse of Dragon. 2600 attack. 2100 defense. Is this card worth going into with Metamorphosis? Like, it's, it's obviously the same technicality that... That goes with all the other fusion monsters. We'll put it next to Curse of Dragon because they're friends. Whew. I think it is a decent metamorphosis target for the time. I mean, you could take your Dark Magician and bring out a more powerful card with it. Here's the list in its totality. I think it's interesting. Maybe Goodish is a tier that we don't always need. It might be like the Rumpus Room where it's here when we need it but it disappears otherwise. I think it's a pretty good list. That's all we have time for tonight, but... That's Legend of Blue Eyes. First set introduced to the game. So much complexity. So much normal filler. It's like 50% filler. Especially these cards. All the equip spells and the field spells and the normal monsters. It'll be real interesting to see way in the future how many cards are actually useful and we could start getting a percentage running but that's for a future stream <laughs>